Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be adding some enemies into our tower defense game. So let's roll the introduction and let's get right into it. So in the previous video, and just like this one, I've already gone ahead and I've added the object that we're going to be working with, and it's just going to be an object enemy, and I've assigned the sprite. If we take a look at the sprite, we have three frames, so our sprite is just going to be using different colors, or I should say our enemy is going to have different colors. Now, before we can even actually start coding on our enemy, let's open up our main room. And what we need to do is we need to create the paths that are going to be used. I have a path top and a path bottom layer. However, nothing is in these layers. So let's start with a path top. We'll say select path and create path. Now it'll create a path down here and we'll clean this up in one second. What we're going to do is zoom in and then just kind of left click over here and then left click in the middle and follow our pathway all the way around until we get to the very end. And I want to make sure my very end is going to be somewhere over here. We'll say 1472. Now uh, let's hide the path top and go to path bottom. We'll say select path and do a create new path again. And once again, we'll just come over here. We'll click somewhere over here and I can't see it. There we go. So we'll click somewhere over there and then we are just going to follow the path on the bottom like so. And this is going to be where our enemies are going to be walking. I think we had 1472. Okay. So now that we have these two paths in here, you can see that we have a top path and bottom path. So this top path is, I believe it's path one. Let's go down here and rename these uh, properly. We'll say path top and path bottom. And then for organization, we're going to just select them and drag and drop them into our path folder. Now we can go ahead and hide these and lock them as we don't need the paths anymore. And we can close our main room there. So to get our enemies working, we need a couple different things. We need different health. We need different speeds, different colors, and then a different path. So for the health, what I'm going to be doing is using a hit points variable and we're going to clamp it means meaning that the value cannot be anywhere between the min value that we give it and the maximum value. So right now I'm saying choose a random range between one and whatever wave we're on. Make sure that the minimum is going to be one and the maximum will be the current wave plus one. So if it chooses a, a number of zero, it's automatically going to get changed to one. Now, I also want to make sure that the hit points are going to be a nice lurping function, or we need to calculate the amount to draw a health bar. So we will also use a hit points max and just set it to whatever the hit points is. Now we need to decide the current path. So we'll use a variable called current path and we are just going to use the function choose, which will randomly choose one of the values that we put in here. And for the values, we're going to be using the path top and the path bottom. So it will pick a random path for us. Now for the speed, well, we'll say speed underscore current, and we are going to use a formula to calculate the speed. And I will say that definitely play around with these numbers. They're nothing too fancy, but we're basically just saying, okay, give me a random number between 0 0.5 and a, another random number between whatever the half of the wave is. So it could be 0 0.7, it could be one, it could be 10. Basically, it's just gonna set it to the actual speed. And like I said, play around with these numbers. And because we have different colors, we need to make sure our image speed is set to zero and then we will assign our image index. And this, we need a I random range between zero and three because we have three different frames. To get our enemy actually moving, we need to use a function called path start. And this is a built-in function and it accepts the path, the speed, what happens at the end and whether or not the path will be absolute. So we know that we want a current path and a current speed, or I should say speed underscore current. And what do we want for the end action? Well, we want our enemy to actually stop at the very end. So we'll say path action and we want path action stop. And we do want this to be absolute. If this is not absolute, basically what will happen if we load up our room and let's say our enemy is, I'm gonna put him just, right here because it's not locked. Say if our enemy is spawned up here and it's the top path, he'll move along like this and then come up off the screen and then back down. When it's absolute, it will go on exactly the path number. So he will be traveling along the dirt road there. 
And when the enemy ends, we need to do add event other, and we'll say path ended. All we want to do for now is just remove the entity. So we'll destroy it to clean up the memory. Now, before we do anything, I want to make sure I go to the draw event, and I want to make sure I say draw self. And the reason I'm doing this is because we want to draw a health bar underneath the actual enemy. So for the health bar, we need to know the amount or percent that we're going to be drawing. So we will use the hit points divided by the maximum number of hit points that we have times 100 to make it into a percent. Next, we need to know what the sprite or half the width of our sprite is. So we'll say sprite width divided by two. And again, we don't need to do this, but this is just going to keep our formula easier. And with all that, we could just say draw health bar and we are going to pass it the x coordinate of our enemy minus whatever the sprite half is then we need to pass it the y coordinates and we are going to say plus 32 to move it down and next we need the x plus sprite half to go all the way over to the right and again y plus 34 we're giving it two pixels so it's a nice small kind of health bar then we'll pass in our amount variable i'll make sure i fix that amount and then the back color we will use a c black the minimum will be c red the maximum again will be red and the direction we want from left to right so we will use the number zero and again these numbers you can find in the manual so show back is true and show border will be false so this will draw a health bar on our actual enemy so before we can actually put this enemy in the game, we're missing one thing and we're missing a spawner. So let's actually right click and go to create a new object and let's call this one OBJ spawner wave. We will use a create event and then we will have an alarm zero. In the create event, all we want to do is make sure that we assign a timer to the next wave. So we'll say the next wave has to happen within five seconds. And then the alarm will set zero for five seconds, meaning that alarm zero will actually run the function. So the first thing we need to do is increase our wave count. And then we want to loop over the number of enemies that we want to create. Now, I've used this little formula here where all we're going to do is round down whatever the current wave is times 1.5. So when we get to wave one, we'll only have one enemy, but in wave two, it would be two times 1.5. So that will give us a couple more enemies as we carry on through the game. Now, if you remember when we created that enemy and we check out the create event here, we made sure that when we added the path, we said that the path had to be a, uh, it's absolute. So the path is gonna be absolute. So that means that it doesn't really matter where we put this enemy in the game. So with that, we could say instance underscore create depth, and we could use something like minus 100 for the X, minus 100 for the Y, and then we will use our own layer system here. We'll make sure we grab the enemy layer, and then the object that we want to create is going to be OBJ enemy. Now, because it's absolute, it's going to change these values as soon as the enemy gets created and started on that path. The only other thing we need to do is make sure we go to alarm set here and copy and paste it at the bottom so that alarm zero is continuously running. Now, before we do anything, we also need to make sure that this goes into our room in it because we want it to be placed in our room automatically. So let's just grab what we have for the mouse here, paste it in, clean it up, make sure that we're using the object wave spawner. And for the UI layer, we want to change that to say the enemy layer because it really doesn't matter where this exists because it's an object that has no sprite and we aren't dealing with any other depths beside our own depth system so if we run our game let's see if we have any errors and if we don't have any errors which is completely false because we do have one wrong number of arguments for path start so i have a period here and that needs to be a comma all right let's try this one more time and let's see what we got all right so we are at wave zero and hopefully within five seconds this wave will go up and you can see that we have an enemy here now in another five seconds, this will automatically go up. So you might want to do something like, do I have any enemies on the screen? Are the enemies dead? Or there's a whole bunch of different flags you could put. So that pretty much sums up this video. The next video we'll get to is actually making these guys find the enemies here and shoot them. And then we'll work on the upgrades and putting in some cash and taking away some of the health when these guys reach the end as nothing will happen right now. But that's it for this video. So thanks for watching.
Once again, thank you all for watching. A special shout out to the following in no particular order. Annie, Ashby, Edward, Angel, Darth Wolf, Ian, Paul, Robert, Vil, and Victor. Thank you all for the support. And please like and subscribe. Thanks again.